Hello everyone, welcome to back my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Daniel finds Summer on the patio at Crimson Lights. He reminds her she has a brother and hasn't been returning his calls or texts. Daniel rambles on about her giving him radio silence when he's in the middle of a lawsuit. Summer cries, Daniel, stop, it's Harrison, it's really bad. Daniel holds her as she cries. Once Daniel has been filled in, he says he can't believe people can be that evil. Summer says Jack and Victor are working together but no one trusts each other. Victor wants to take the lead and won't let the police get involved. Chance is doing what he can to make sure Jordan won't get off on a technicality. Kyle, all the while, can't stop defending Claire. Daniel thinks the important thing is bringing Harrison home. Summer cries that everyone is doing what they can, and she loves them for it, but Harrison isn't home. Daniel takes her hands and urges her to stay strong. When she gets Harrison home, she should never let him go. In the alley, Nikki mutters, Come on, Jordan. I'm right where you want me. Where are you? In a motel room, Jordan asks Harrison if he doesn't like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. She complains he's grown up in a mansion with a bunch of snobs being able to get whatever he wants. When I think about what you have gone through, I could weep. She offers up the sandwich and he turns away. She says she's losing patience with him and it's time he learned one of life's lessons. Revenge never comes cheap. Jordan offers up the plate with the sandwich one more time and says it's this or nothing at all. Harrison knocks it out of her hand and shouts, Go away. You're a witch. I want to go home with my mom and dad. Jordan tells him they don't want him anymore. Your mom and dad don't love you anymore. They asked her to bring him there because they got sick and tired of him. I'm all you've got now. Jack enters the Abbott mansion looking exhausted. Tracy is there and he updates her on the search for Harrison. Tracy urges him not to think the worst. Jordan is clever, but she's not going to win this time. Jack asks about Ashley's visit to the therapist. Tracy says the appointment never happened. She explains they only got as far as the waiting room. Ashley was anxious and jittery on the way there, and when they arrived, a sense of calm came over her. She took her hand and said, Taking control of my well-being feels right. Ashley went to the restroom at the doctor's office and she never came back. She eventually got a text saying she was having second thoughts and had to leave. Ashley promised to meet her back at the house or she didn't. Tracy can't keep up with the mood changes and the way she talks. The longer she doesn't get treatment, Jack says, I know, the longer it will take for her to get well again. In the jazz lounge, Ashley sidles up to the bar and orders a tequila with a teeny, weeny slice of lime in a southern accent. She downs the shot of tequila and her phone starts ringing. She purrs that whatever Jack Abbott wants will have to wait. She winks at the bartender, hit me again, handsome. At the Abbott mansion, Jack leaves Ashley a voicemail to call him or Tracy. We understand it's hard. Sometimes you get nervous. We just don't want you to have another blackout. He disconnects and asks Tracy if they should force her into a program. Tracy gops, what? You're talking about committing our sister. My God, has it come to that? Jack says it kills him to even think about it, but they've had a lot of false starts. If they can't get her to a doctor, what choice do they have? We don't even know where she is. Tracy knows, and it terrifies her, but she acknowledged she has a problem. Jack argues if forcing the issue is the answer, how do they not do it? Tracy fumes that there has to be another way. Jack asks her to give him an alternative. Tracy thinks maybe it's the idea of sitting down with a stranger that scares her. What if they can get her psychologist friend in Paris to come to Geno City? Jack thinks it could work, but first they have to find Ashley and get her home. In the motel room, Jordan tells herself, get on your game. She picks up the phone and listens to a voicemail from Nikki saying she's waiting for her. On Crimson Light's patio, Daniel apologizes for being a jerk. 
Summer assures him he had no way of knowing what was going on. Today, she needed her brother. Daniel asks if their mother knows. Summer says she does. Daniel offers to run interference with her. Summer says, believe it or not, she's actually been pretty good. She's being supportive. It's been a relief. I needed it. Daniel wonders if she's finally changed. He asks what he can do to help. Summer says she's a mess. If you could just keep me company for a while. Daniel assures her he's not going anywhere.